Hey, it's me, Jackie Love, the Love Doctor, and you just tune into It's All About Love. Tonight, I am filming this video in my car because it feels so good in here because my air broke in my house, and I, I said, let me just do this video in the car because it's been so hot, and I am in California, if you don't know. And it's, we've been having a like a heat wave right now. So everybody in California, shout out. I know y'all trying to keep cool. So right now it's about 82. Feels good in my car though. So it, it was like 100 degrees uh, today. It's Thursday. Um, this is August the 9th. And I am going to be answering questions tonight. And this, these two questions, they come from Tiffany Brown, and she emailed me, and she had two questions which were kind of conjoined, and I'm going to be answering those questions tonight to the best of my ability, and I just thank you if this is your first time joining me, and I'm going to be quick on this video because I'm learning to condense my videos because I know a lot of us are so busy. And I am too. So let's just get right to it. So thanks again for joining me. So the question tonight is, um, her first question is, why do I feel invisible? She said, why do I feel invisible? That's a good, good question. It's a very good question. And I want to ask all the people in the audience, in my YouTube audience, do you ever feel invisible like no one else sees you but you? Maybe that means that they don't understand you, they don't get you, so you feel invisible. Um, a lot of us are developing social anxiety. Uh, we watch so many things on 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 our smartphones and and we watch a lot of tv and so we're getting unconnected to reality you know and so i believe that has a lot to do with it but when she's saying that she said why i'm looking on my samsung galaxy just in case you don't know she's asking why does she feel invisible she the, de the, the details of the email was pretty much she was saying that she feels invisible in this world, like she's not important. Like, you know, people in her relationships are just, it's like everybody else matters but her. And to you, Tiffany, just like I would say on all the other questions that I answer on Monday nights, but this is not Monday, this is Thursday. <laughs> But uh, I would say to you, I would ask you a question with that question. Why do you feel invisible? Um, the reason why I ask that question is because a lot of times, sometimes we grow up and, you know, we're always like, if you're like me, I, I didn't grow up with my mother and my father in my home. I grew up with just my mom and my mother she she did her best church going woman christian you know and she she was all about god and and uh trying to get to heaven and and i admire her for that she taught me uh that same thing uh that same ethic um if that's the right word and you know but the, at the same time, you know, she would stay on her phone a lot and pray with her friends and they would be fasting about this thing or that thing. And she didn't really have a time that that I think that that it, that it, the time to to really just spend. Well, she didn't take the time to spend the quality time with with me, a shy daughter, um, uh, the, the, the baby of the family um, to to help me with my fears and then make me feel important. I don't think that she had, I don't think she did that on purpose. I just think that she already had her own problems to be concerned about because she grew up with the mother and a father. However, her mother, her mother raised her, uh, her and her seven siblings pretty much alone because my grandfather, 
was out with Sadie, his other woman. So she pretty much grew up and came from a dysfunctional family and she created a dysfunctional family. And that's what it is. That's what, what makes a generational curse. A generational curse is basically someone, uh, a person or family that that goes they repeat the same patterns as the their mom, a father, somebody in their family. They do the same thing in it, and that that's what a generational curse is. is somebody that repeats the same patterns, and so she created the same pattern. Kind of, even though she had a father, um, he was a part time father. We didn't have a father at all, so she spent a lot of time. Um, you know, praying to God to get that special someone in her life. And in return, she didn't have a lot of time or she didn't have the knowledge to um, be there for for the, uh, her children um, in a really emotional way that we needed. So I'm asking that, I'm, I'm saying that to say, where did this start? Like, have you always felt invisible? Was your mom there for you for emotional support? Was your father there for emotional support when you were a kid? Um, because if you didn't have those that emotional support, um, say you had a bad day at school, and, you know, did you deal with the problems on your own or did you have someone to help to comfort you and to help you to understand how to ha handle the problem next time? And did you feel supported? by your your guardian to make you feel that they had your back or did you feel like you handled it by yourself because most of the times what we feel as adults we've learned that behavior as children and we carry it into our adulthood even though we are adults we we weren't taught uh how to deal with certain things and and i I like to always bring up coping skills because of most of us we we don't know we don't have proper coping skills because we were never taught those. And that's one thing that I'm going to be teaching here on my program it's all about love because without proper coping skills you can't properly love yourself or love anybody else or learn or know how to be loved because you're always looking to fill that empty spot inside of you that has never been filled as a child. And pretty much it's not too late, but you think it is, but it's like one of those empty spots that you can't put your finger on. You don't know why it's empty, but it's empty because that was never nurtured as those empty spaces were never filled when you were, were a child, but it's not too late. So stay tuned to for more programs um we're going to be talking getting more deeper into coping skills um so i understand why you feel invisible but because I, again i grew up uh, feeling invisible and i thought my thing was if i could get the perfect boyfriend then that would make me you know he can see me and i would feel seen and i would be a princess and and everything would be great and my life would be awesome because of it but that never happened and i've always i've always had a boyfriend i've never had a problem getting a boyfriend i you know thank god i mean like some people i see they 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 don't they they have problems getting a boyfriend or you know and um i was i've never had that problem i have my other stuff that i had to deal with in my life but at the same time, it was never, ever satisfying. I was never, ever satisfied. I was never, ever content because I was always looking for a perfect person because that hole in my heart was just there, like empty, exposed. And it was, it was like seething, like, like it was bleeding, like it was needed to be healed. And I, I thought by looking at the Disney cartoons of the princesses that, and hearing the fairy tales that my mom spoke of when she told us bedtime stories that I would get a perfect man and that would, would take all my problems away and I would live happily ever after. Did you guys think that? Did you think that, Tiffany? Were you looking for someone 
to fill up that empty nest in your heart because you know when you were a kid maybe you felt that you know some you weren't heard you you know you got a lot of unanswered questions that you had to figure out yourself well i figured like i was i was the same way i taught myself a lot of stuff i learned a lot of stuff from watching tv uh watching the brady bunch you guys gonna hear me say that a lot i'm a 70s kid so i love the 70s and plus i mean that's where i that's where i was a little kid and that's why i remember my mom we would just watch our one tv that we had in the living room and we would watch those 70s shows and they would have the families the perfect families you know that i thought i said well you know that's what i was striving for to have a, a perfect family which that doesn't exist but now i know all these years later i finally figured it out and you know let myself be okay with knowing that no one's perfect now and so I it took a while to heal myself um, from those fantasies you know um, that's what they are fantasies you know when you watch those Disney movies and you, you, you want someone to come and rescue you and you live happily ever after you won't feel invisible anymore those are all fantasies and it's not about that it's about learning um how to go back as an adult and heal that inner child that felt invisible and felt lonely, like unheard, and go back and, and, and be able to go inside yourself and talk to your inner child and tell your inner child, Tiffany, you're you know, we're grown now and everything's gonna be okay. I'm here now and I'm gonna take care of you. And I'll be talking about uh, healing your inner child on another episode of It's All About Love. But the, I want to get to the second question um, that Tiffany had for me. And she just it concluded um, the first question. Uh, she said, why am I invisible? But this one says it was really short. It just said, am I? And I want to say... I totally get that question, even though it's two words, am I? No, you're not, Tiffany. You're not invisible. You're not invisible. I mean, if you were invisible, then I wouldn't have got your email and I wouldn't be talking about it on the air right now in front of all these people. So that goes to show you that you're not invisible because God thought that much of you to allow me to choose your email to talk about on on the air tonight so that is lets you know that you are not invisible that you are important and that um that you're gonna you're in the process of being healed you're in process you're on you're on your way i think we all are um we're on the road we're here on earth in this human body um we're we're experienced and we're in this human body to have a human experience and, and experience on earth so it's kind of challenging sometimes for us all. And we feel sometimes, I'm sure all of us, we feel invisible. And again, it's like, no, you're not invisible. Of course, I mean, you see yourself in a mirror, don't you? <laughs> I mean, I see myself in a mirror. And sometimes it, it, it was at a point one time that I didn't even want to look in the mirror. Because, I mean, the devil or, you know, evil spirits or whatever this low self-esteem was telling me you know look at you not you're not as pretty you're not pretty or you're fat you're this and that and you, you need to be have this or you don't you're you're not as successful as so and so is you don't have all these friends like other persons do and i used to always i at one point in my life i put people on a pedestal and it was not a good thing but it was just the low self-esteem. It, it, again, it, it stemmed back from my childhood where I was not nurtured. I was not um, seen properly. So um, now I had to go to um, get to the age that I am now and begin. Well, not just now. I've been working on healing my inner child for some time now and I'm still working on it in the process and it's working out. I'm aware of it and it's working out. 
and I um, I take it day by day. And some days are easier than others. I really am um, working towards it because I know I'm learning that, we're, again, we're all here for a purpose. And the purpose is to live our best lives ever. So the whole thing is that we have to figure out. Um, it's like a game. We've heard that it's the game of life. We go through life and we, we we're brought here and we have our story. You know, whatever that story is, some people were um, hurt as a child, you know, by some adult that was probably hurt themselves. And then they grow up and they probably hurt their children, too, if they have them. Because, like, again, it's, it's a repeated cycle. It's a, a generational curse thing. And that's because we normally repeat what our parents do, even though we don't want to. In some form, we, we get kind of past it, but then sometimes we do have some things that we do repeat. And um, and so, I'm sure my mom felt invisible. But I don't, looking back, I don't, I don't think, even though she had a lot of friends, at church friends, and she traveled and visited friends, I don't think that she was a very uh, secure person in a lot of ways, uh, because she never remarried after my father and her broke up. And so I was the last person. I was the last time my mom was ever with a man. Um, like, I, that was her last time. And she never remarried. She didn't have a boyfriend or anything. She was waiting on God to send her that perfect man. Which perfect man don't exist. But at the same time, when she was and her friends were on the phone talking and praying and like church people do about having a perfect person in their life and trusting God and fasting together and whatnot, which I don't, you know, I don't have anything against that. Um, but at the same time, you know, she didn't really, wasn't really able to focus on her children um, the way that, that, that we needed to, so that we can be, uh, nurtured and know that we're important and that no matter even though we didn't have a father in our lives that we were not invisible and, and, and have our dreams nurtured so that we can be um, better um, but in retrospect and being a parent myself I start off really young and I have my kids I had my first child when I, I got pregnant when I was 13 and I talk about that in my book, Waiting for Love. And you can get that book on Amazon.com. It is on, available in soft cover and also Kindle copy. And it's a very good book to talk about my life, or how I was raised without a father, and how the, the impact that it had on my life. I mean, I felt totally invisible. I was on a search, and I figured if I find again, I would say this, but I find that fir that perfect man, he's going to come and I was going to feel visible and he was going to make me powerful. I, I don't know why I thought, well, I do know because the TV programs, Walt Disney and um, my mom used to tell me stories and those things stuck to me. And that's what I thought would make my life better and make me not invisible. But it never happened, even though I had boyfriends and it was you know it was something that needed to be cultivated as, as you know when I was a little kid but that didn't happen so um, I had to learn how with God's help to heal myself uh, to heal my own inner child to nurture my own inner child to tell my own self that I am good enough that I'm pretty enough that I'm you know, no matter what size I am, size 14, size 7, size 10, 1, whatever. I've never been past the 14, thank God. But um, I had to let myself know no matter what size I'm in, I am good. I am good enough. And I don't need to compare myself to anybody else because they're the same as me. Like, they may have a different life. They may have few more nicer things but when I look at my life my life is it's pretty good too so I'm thankful for that 
and that I was able to learn those things because it was not easy. Um, it was a pretty challenging time. And I, I'm so happy that every day I, my life just gets better and better, but only because I made a conscious decision with God's help to be better and better and to listen to self-help, um, you know, tapes or videos and, and to, to read self-help books and to pray, pray, pray to God and to my guardian angels, which are here to help us to, you know, Psalm 91 is my favorite Psalms. And it says how God has given angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways, all of our ways. They will lift us up at least we dash our foot against a stone. I mean, they're there for us, basically. I won't read the whole thing. You can check it out yourself. Psalms 91. It's a, a, a Psalms of protection and safety. And it lets us know that we can ask our angels anything they're here for us. And, you know, we can any time if we're feeling down or empty, we need comfort and love. We can say, hey, angels, we, I need you. Like, I really need you. So happy if we don't know what to do with ourselves, you know, because I didn't, I don't always know what to do. I don't always know what to do with my, with my life because life can be kind of challenging. Sometimes it may get um, a little boring and, and you, you know, especially if you spend a lot of time uh, with yourself and like I do. And, uh, and sometimes I just say, you know, angels what should I do now I say that every day what should I do now and you know I've learned so much from asking that question because I I learned how to be more creative um, you know I, I do arts and crafts I paint I draw I make things that are really beautiful I'm, I'm developing a, um, a lamp line I have some prototypes that that was not that great um, but I make chandeliers and also I'm making another type of chandelier that I'm working on right now. But the thing is, is that your angels, basically I'm saying is that your angels will help you remind you of the gifts that you have and, and bring out the things in your, in you that, they that are good and that you can you utilize and make your life better. And, and like, um, you know, just fix you on it, help you to fix yourself so that you will know that you are important, that you are good, and that you are not invisible. And most important, and that you let you know that you are loved. So, to answer your question, no, you are not invisible. We all have challenges. Yes, we do. We all have challenges, and we're here on earth again, as I said earlier to have a earthly experience in this human body, but we are not our body. We're, we're just here having an experience. God gave us, you know, all a story and we took that story as a child and now we're grown ups, and it's like, okay, what are we going to do? It's almost like, um, a puzzle. <laughs> it's like, okay. You have the story, okay? Now, how are we, how are you gonna work through the story and, and make your life awesome? I'm here to help you to forgive and to move on and to be the best you can be, and then to go out and help other people touch other lives and just just enjoy your life. So, um, so that is basically what it is all about, and. Um, a lot of people, they want to be famous, you know, like I wanted to be famous too because I was totally feeling invisible. And I thought, okay, if I could just be famous, then I will have people to love me and, you know, uh, you know, let me, make me feel good about myself. And, you know, all that fame and stuff, I mean, it's all good and stuff, I guess. But if you don't love yourself, I mean, someone else can't make you feel good about yourself. I don't care how many likes you get on Facebook. Because if you're depending on likes and loves on Facebook and whatever, um, um, you know, me, excuse me, media you're on, social media, you're not going to be happy, you know, if someone doesn't like your stuff. you ever been on, like, you put something on and you get so many likes and, 
everybody's liking, oh girl, I like that and da da da. And then like sometimes it's like you put a post on it, and it's like you hear crickets. Like you can hear crickets because nobody is on there. Nobody's liking your stuff. And then you start feeling you start feeling a little bit sad. And it's like you can't I'm learning, it's like I can't depend on someone else to say, Hey, I like your your posts, you know. I gotta like my own posts. You know what? I gotta like me, period. It's not about everybody pushing like on my my posts on Facebook or I don't go on all those other ones. It's just so much for me. I it's just so noisy to me. I do go on YouTube. Matter of fact, I have a subscription to YouTube because I don't like all those commercials. So, uh, I just pay a little $10 so I don't have to watch all those commercials. But anyway, I don't I don't depend on people to like my stuff. I will push love myself on all my posts. If you notice on Facebook, you guys go on my Facebook page. I push love on my own Facebook um, post because I, I figure if I don't love it, if I don't like myself, it doesn't really matter what other people think, you know, and I, I'm not going to get disappointed because someone doesn't like myself, you know, I look, I do love that white, I mean, of course, I'm, my, one of my love languages are, is uh, words of affirmation, so I, of course, I like when people say, hey, that's nice, you know, I like that, good job, you know, hey, you look nice today, um, you know, give me compliments, so I love that, that's my personality type, my love language, one of my love languages, Another one is quality time, um, but at the same time, I have to I have to affirm myself. You know, I have to, I have to say, hey, you look good today. You know, no matter if I'm just chilling at home and I still got my scarf on my head. You know, walk around my house shoes, I still have to be okay and look in the mirror and be able to say, you know what? Before you know, even before maybe I, I'm brushing my teeth or whatever, not to say, you know what, Jackie, I love you. I really love you. So I'm really looking at myself in my eyes and I love myself. So where I have to learn how to do that. So even when I go out, if someone, if no one says, you know, you look nice today, I can tell myself that and be okay with it. So I don't just, I don't get dressed up for uh, other people. I get dressed up for myself. I put on makeup for myself. I look, I keep myself neat for me. Um, it's not, it's not about what other people think about me. I, I again, I do love affirmation, words of affirmation. I love it. Ah, you know, you guys, please leave comments there on the on in the comment section and tell me how much you like this video, and and other things that you'd like to talk about on it's on about love. Um, but then at the same time, I'm if if so, no one tells me what I'm saying is I have to keep on keeping on. I have to still live in my skin live out this life in this body on earth and and learn to live my best life ever. I learned how to stop being around people that are toxic who are not good for me. Stop trying to prove myself to people and just different things, different lessons that I had to learn to make me not feel invisible. Because, you know, sometimes we make ourselves feel invisible because we, we put ourselves in situations where we become a doormat because we want to so badly to be um, you know, popular or loved and um, famous. You know, we want to be famous, so we we put on this fake smile and um, you know, be a certain way. But then on the inside, we're we're still empty. So I just say to you, Tiffany. You know, no, you're not invisible, but you do have to get to the bottom line, to the root of why you feel that way. You have to ask yourself those questions. Why do you feel that way? Where does it stem from? And ask yourself, who do you need to forgive? Who do you need to forgive? And who do you, you know, like ask God, like where you can start to help yourself heal. And one good thing is you can start by writing letters to people like me and watching programs like this. As a matter of fact, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be doing more videos to teach you how to love yourselves and how not to feel invisible and how to be loved and how to um, to love other people. So 
I really appreciate you, Tiffany, for answering, um, sending in your question. And everyone that's been waiting for me to come back, I'm so apologetic for taking a little while. It's been so freaking hot in California. And I, I just been sweating. <laughs> So anyway, I was like, that's why I'm in my car. It's nice and cool in here. So I really appreciate you guys looking at this video. I hope these these answers to these questions was good for you, Tiffany. Um, don't hesitate. Anyone who has a question for me, um, I will be back on Monday to answer the question. Um, question and answers Monday. Um, and uh, you can contact me at Jackie Turks Love at gmail wait jackie turks love at gmail.com yes okay i sometimes like because i have two emails and, and i have to remember to add a dot but that one doesn't have a dot it's jackie turks love at gmail.com and um i will answer you back and let you know you know i'll answer your question is uh, briefly and i'll if i use your question on the air I will send you a copy of my book in Kindle form, okay? And it's called Waiting for Love, and it will heal your heart. I really thank you, everyone, for joining me, and I will see you again on next week, Question and Answers Monday. So keep me in your prayers. I'll keep you in mind, and I really appreciate you all for being patient with me and, uh, Thank you so much for watching. This is Jackie Love, a.k.a. The Love Doctor. And I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.